Hey everyone, it's MapMover and in this video I'll be talking about the SMLE Mark III in Battlefield 1 and what is the exact best customization to go for with this weapon including zoom level. But first off a brief intro into the SMLE and as this is my first scout weapon video some of the nuances within the different scout weapons on offer will be discussed. First off, what does the SMLE stand for and it stands for the Short Magazine Lee Enfield and it's a British designed weapon. The short comes from the fact that the Mark III's overall length is shorter than its previous versions and the magazine from the fact that the weapon has a non-detachable magazine holding 10 rounds. And the fact that it holds 10 rounds is one of the biggest advantages to the SMLE's design compared to other rifles from the World War I era and more on this later. Now the Lee Enfield part comes from the designer's surname being Lee and the factory it was produced from being located in Enfield, England. While trained users of this weapon were able to achieve around 20 to 30 on target rounds per minute and this was known in the British military as the Mad Minute. Having said that, the SMLE's bolt action required a lot of practice to achieve this firing rate and other weapons that had a straight pull bolt system can achieve a greater fire rate due to straight pull bolts requiring a lot less movement to rechamber around. One such example of a straight pull bolt weapon in BF1 would be the Austro-Hungarian Gewehr M95 and in game the M95 has a higher fire rate than the SMLE. So I suppose different bolt actions and different round types within Battlefield 1's scout weapon can explain why so many of the scout weapons have their own unique characteristics and different key performance areas that are better in certain areas than the other scout weapons on offer. For example, the SMLE's 303 round can be a lot harder hitting than the Gewehr M95 depending on the distance, however the Gewehr M95 can fire much faster with its straight pull bolt, but suffers with damage due to its 8x50mm round nose cartridge. And these real life considerations have been implemented in Battlefield 1, however only to a certain degree. This is because BF1 has added a very interesting new mechanic known as the Sweet Spot which is a one shot kill to the torso at a certain range. Obviously this will include headshots too but these ranges vary depending on what weapons you go for. The SMLE has a Sweet Spot range but the Gewehr M95 does not and so the Gewehr M95 doesn't have the ability to one shot kill to the torso and having the SMLE having that extra sort of power so to speak in that range area possibly is a realistic consideration. Now, I can understand the sweet spot range is varying dependent on the weapon as they all have different round types and barrel lengths in, in real life. However, one thing you'll notice with all the scout weapons that employ the sweet spot mechanic is that the sweet spot itself doesn't start from zero meters. Instead, it works its way up at a certain distance and then works its way back down again. And this itself is of course unrealistic, but the fact that the SMLE arguably hits harder than the Gewehr M95 is realistic. So in the grand scheme of gameplay balancing it makes perfect sense really to do this because it dissuades players from running around all day into players faces just going for kill streaks and no scopes instead of focusing on what this game is all about and that's of course playing the objectives. But as I mentioned earlier it is realistic for the SMLE's 3 or 3 round to hit harder than the Gewehr M95's round. So there is a certain degree of faithfulness to real life while balancing gameplay fun and all in all I feel the sweet spot mechanic improves the sniping experience from previous Battlefield games and balances the scout class so as not to make it OP. So I hope you were able to follow me with what I was saying there but with this brief intro out of the way let's take a look at the SMLE Mark III. Now the SMLE has a muzzle velocity of 740 meters per second which is the same across all its variants. This isn't anywhere near to the fastest muzzle velocity in the Scout class, however, it is still certainly very fast. And when you compare muzzle velocities in BF1 to previous Battlefield games, you'll notice that you don't need to lead your targets anywhere near the level you used to. However, long range sniping suffers because bullet drop has been increased and so you'll encounter this weird dynamic whereby at a certain range your bullet will fly straight like a laser and then all of a sudden it will start to drop at what appears to be an alarming rate. Fear not however because all of the scout class weapons in game perform excellently from a muzzle velocity and bullet drop perspective especially when you stick to the sweet spot ranges for your respective scout weapon. And Battlefield 1 has also added another dynamic to reloads and this is the pre and post reload delay when reloading weapons that have non-detachable magazines which is where single bullets and strip clips of fire are used 
and that affects a large proportion of weapons in game for the scout and medic class in particular. This pre and post reload delay is where your soldier is moving the rifle and picking up his rounds before bullets are added into the weapon and when cocking the weapon after having added the rounds in. Now you might not really notice this but in short it means reloading is going to be slow and having a 10 round magazine which the SMLE provides will be a huge benefit. It is also one more thing to consider when choosing a rifle and you can find all of these exact facts and figures on Simtic.com's Battlefield 1 page because the delay figures vary from weapon to weapon as well as the individual reload times. I have to take my hat off to DICE, they really thought about the tiniest of details for this game. Anyway, with all that said, I want to talk about the differences between the three variants on offer and what is, in my opinion, the best of all three and how you should customize it. So there are three different variants to the SMLE and the first one is the Marksman and this has a scope you can customize from a 2.5 time zoom up to a 4 time zoom with various crosshairs and of these my favorite is the standard cross with my zoom of preference being 2.5 instead of the full 4 and I'll explain later why this is my favorite zoom. The second version is the Carbine and this has a reflex sight of which you can customize zoom levels from 1.25 up to 2.5 times. And the third version is the Infantry model which is exactly the same as the Lawrence of Arabia SMLE. The only difference between these is the Lawrence of Arabia SMLE being a skinned version of the SMLE Infantry and with it having a different order of sight zoom customization which is a bit weird even though the offering is exactly the same of having a 1x zoom up to a 2x zoom. The infantry model uses iron sights and I'll refer to both the infantry version and Lawrence of Arabia skin as just the infantry model for the remainder of this video. In case you're wondering, the Lawrence of Arabia SMLE is only available to those that pre-ordered BF1. Now I've played around with all these variants and I'll tell you which one is the most effective variant with the most effective setup. First off the carbine version, the benefit here being the optical sights. Now, Generally, I like optical sights, but with a sniper, you have to be very, very quick to get your sights and snap onto a target to get your one shot on target ASAP. And the problem here is that the carbine just takes too long to get into ADS view. During this time, your enemy could run away behind cover or you could get counter sniped. So ideally, you'll want to be in ADS as much as possible, but this limits your movement and the whole point of the optical sight is to improve your movement overall by not worrying so much about positioning and going for those closer range targets. The long time it takes to ADS really does work against you here and although the carbine version does have the very interesting benefit of having better ADS accuracy while moving than the infantry and marksman versions, that still doesn't beat staying still while aiming which is really what you want to be doing with any scout weapon in game. Also the carbine version does have a better hip fire accuracy but again you really don't want to be hip firing any bolt action weapon. So personally, I'd avoid this setup. I also have one more reason I'd avoid the carbine version, but I'll explain that in just a second because the next version suffers from the same problem. And the next version is the infantry version, once again, exactly the same as the Lawrence of Arabia SMLE skin. Now, the interesting thing here is that the infantry version has a much faster ADS time, which is really important, but it also has a much faster recoil decrease time and a much faster accuracy spread cooldown time than the other versions. Meaning that you can get your sights back on target to re-engage an opponent and be accurate too if you haven't been lucky enough to get your one shot sweet spot kill. And you'll find yourself needing those benefits to re-engage very often because the problem I have with the infantry version and I have the same problem with the carbine version which I was alluding to earlier when finishing up talking about the carbine is that the zoom level and sight types just do not complement this weapon for engaging targets at its sweet spot range. You see a one time zoom is too low and a two time zoom although being very close the iron sights just let down because iron sights don't offer that level of precision that an optical sight or crosshair can provide and which you need because the sweet spot range for this weapon starts at 40 meters and goes up to 75 meters. So anything closer than 40 meters and beyond 75 meters will mean you not performing a one shot kill to the torso. Now this is a 35 meter distance and that's a very tight window of opportunity where you'll want an enemy to appear large enough in your sights but not too large at the same time and the max 2 times zoom of the iron sights just doesn't work well for enemies around 50 plus meters. Up to about 40, 50 meters okay but 50 to 75 meters not so good and that is a large part of your sweet spot right there. Now you can get those enemies at 50 to 75 meters but you need to take your time when aiming 
and your enemy must be staying still and in my experience I've found these circumstances to be few and far between. But again the 40 to 50 meter mark really is the max engagement for any iron sighted weapon. In my opinion the ideal zoom you'll want is a 2.5 times zoom, however the carbine version goes up to a 2.5 times zoom also you might be saying. Well yes it does but the long time it takes the ADS coupled with the fact that the housing just gets in the way a great deal compared with the marksman version just means you'll find yourself performing worse with the carbine compared to the marksman should you decide to use a 2.5 times zoom on both the marksman and the carbine versions and compare them. You see the marksman's crosshair scope is the perfect match for the statistics this weapon provides and with its 40 to 75 meter sweet spot range being just a bit too far for iron sights but too close for anything 4 times and above, I'd recommend the 25 times zoom as the best because it enables enemies to be large enough to hit the torso at the 75 meter range. But not too large at the 40 meter range, plus you'll have some nice peripheral vision in your scope when you're zoomed in, which you'll very much be needing for those enemies at 40 to 50 meters because they'll typically be running around a lot and you need to see a wider area in order to keep up with their movements as you're tracking them with your crosshair. So to sum up, if you're using the SMLE Mark III as your scout weapon of choice, go with the Marksman version and go with the 2.5 times zoom. Personally, I recommend getting rid of the bayonet for having a lighter feel when moving around and ADSing, plus I never really use it anyway, but that's up to you. And I recommend using the spotting flare to reveal enemy targets that might be trying to rush you and going with the K-Bullets because it really does help your team when you're disrupting tanks and armor. The SMLE is one of the close range scout snipers so you'll need an accurate but close range scope so give the 2.5 times scope a go but of course bear in mind this weapon isn't going to do well in wide open maps and the sweet spot range is very tight at only a 35 meter window of opportunity so keep practicing. I guarantee you the more you stick with one sight type and the more you use it the quicker you'll be able to determine whether or not an enemy is within your sweet spot range by just looking at them. And if you're going to do this then do it right and go for the 25 times zoom marksman. When it comes to crosshair type I go for the standard cross but that really is up to you. And that's me done with my review and recommendation of choice for the SMLE Mark III. I did actually end up having a lot of fun with this weapon but it just took a while to really identify its sweet spot range and you'll be surprised with exactly how close it is instead of being far and it might be somewhat deceptive so play around with it try and get a marker of around where 40 meters is and using an objective is a great idea and you'll find that after a few attempts after getting killed a few times and having all those frustrating uh, shots where you're not getting a one shot kill you'll find after a while you get used to it and you end up re being really really good with it. Having said that it's not my favourite scout class weapon but it is still a really fun option to go for. I really hope you've enjoyed this review, make sure you have fun and hopefully I'll see you in a battlefield near me soon. As always it's been an absolute pleasure, have a good one all, Map Mover out.